Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Slippery Steve and I have the invention of a lifetime. For a very small investment of less than a litre of water, I am going to make 5, 10, 15 litres out of my patented invention here. This is going to solve all the problems of the world in this amazing box here. So, just a small amount of water and out it's gonna flow. You just watch, we're gonna fill this bucket easily. All right, so here we go. Just a small amount of water in. And we just wait a little while. Let's, we're just gonna prime it. This is what we call priming. And here we go, it's already starting. My goodness, look at that, this beautiful water starting. But it's not really that much yet. Surely we can get a little bit more. How about we prime it a little bit further and see if we can get a little bit more water. Because I think we, you wouldn't be satisfied with that. Let's get a little bit more going. Now, my friends, look at that. Beautiful water flowing. We've already got at least a litre of this fabulous, wonderful, fresh water. So, Science Steve here. Now, that wasn't magic at all. It was really just science. It was the science of a siphon. A siphon uses a really important property of water called cohesion. Essentially what that means is that water molecules like to stick together. I'll show you what a water molecule looks like. It's got an oxygen and it's got two hydrogens kind of looks a bit like Mickey Mouse ears. Now, the oxygen part of it is slightly negative because it hogs the electrons and hydrogen is slightly positive. So the next water molecule sits around about here with the oxygen and the hydrogen. And so the negative part of one uh, water molecule um, tends to be attracted to the positive part of the next water molecule and we have this electrostatic force. Their opposites attract, so they actually hold together. And so then we continue that all the way along. So these water molecules tend to stick together. Now that's the reason why when you do a belly flop in the water it really hurts because the water has creates surface tension, doesn't want to separate. It's the same reason why water sticks together on a siphon. So once you get that water moving, it wants to stick together. It's the same reason, the really important mechanism to, to assist our trees and plants to get water from its roots all the way up into the uh, leaves where photosynthesis occurs. The tallest trees in the world are over 150 metres tall and they get the water they require for photosynthesis up here in the leaves from their roots. So plants can't actually absorb water directly through their leaves. Their leaves are waterproof. So they need to be able to take water over 150 metres from the soil up into the leaves. How on earth does it possibly do that? There's really three mechanisms. The first one is quite weak, and that's called root pressure. So in the roots, there's, first of all, if we imagine this is a root, a really microscopic root, it has these things called root hairs that make it uh, have a larger surface area. Now, this, this root pressure is basically osmosis. So water tends to follow salt or follow sugar. So it goes from an area of low concentration of salt to higher concentration of salt. So osmosis is the movement of water from an area of low concentration of salt to higher concentration of salt. There's more salt and more sugar in the roots than there is in the soil. So osmosis means it's just the passive movement of water across. So there's a, like a bit of a push to get water into the plant in the first place. But that's not a very strong force. The second one is called cohesion. Now, 
That's the process of water molecules wanting to stick together. So if we have a look inside, so inside the trunk of the tree, if we have a bit of a look inside this, we will see these dead woody straws called xylem. And that is where water gets transported up. They're very, very narrow, around about the thickness of one water molecule. We have this continuous stream of water molecules held together by this slight electrostatic charge. And we have a continuous column all the way from the roots up to the leaves. We've got a little bit of a push down here, continuous column, but what pulls this continuous column? Well, the answer to that is the sun. The sun makes the water evaporate from the leaves, and as it does, it pulls the water up the straw. And this is a process called transpiration. Transpiration is evaporation of water from the leaves, and it pulls this big column of water up. Why do plants need to drink? Well, let's have a look at the formula. We have water plus carbon dioxide produces glucose, C6H12O6 plus oxygen. So trees, through the process of photosynthesis, take water from the ground, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to produce glucose. And of course that glucose then goes into starch and cellulose and food for humans and other animals. And of course, producing the oxygen that we need for breathing as well.